Hi, this is Rajin Finn, and then today we're taking a look at the Zongyi Mitagon Speedmaster 17mm T 1.0 cinema lens for micro four thirds. So for the impatient ones, this is a lens with a cinema housing. It is a very, very fast at T 1.0. It gives us a field of view equivalent in full frame of 34 millimeters, which is again a favorite of mine. And optically, it's very, very soft, kind of glowy actually at T1.0, but I would say that it's acceptably sharp from T1.4 onwards. And this lens is only for micro four thirds mount and it only covers micro four thirds sensors. And now for some more details. So recently I made a cinematic video of some cinematic sunflowers using the cinematic lens mounted on the very cinematic Zcam E2C, which is the same setup that I have right now. And I posted that video separately, so please check the link. But now let me show you maybe a couple of snippets from it. And before we get started, a couple of disclaimers. My usage of the word cinematic is entirely sarcastic. This lens is my, my own, bought with my own money. This video is not sponsored by anyone. And I'm just a hobbyist, so take that for what it's worth. And this whole video, by the way, has been shot with the Zcam E2C and the Speedmaster lens at T1.4. But first, let's talk on the build quality of this thing. And you'll see many reviews saying something along the lines of it's built like a tank and that's wheeled really, really well. But this, of course, is in the very, very cheap end of what qualifies as cinema lenses. So if you compare this to your normal photography, micro four third lenses, think about the Panasonic and Olympus, this is really, really well built and it's big and it's heavy. If you would compare it to proper cinema lenses, the comparison might not fare so well. And when I'd say that it's heavy, this is a little bit over 600 grams. And when I talk about the cinema build, mostly it means that it does have Gears 4, the focus and the iris, both are obviously the clicked. Why would be the focus clicked? But anyway, they are very smooth. But the idea is that you can use follow focus uh, gears with either the focus, or the iris, or both. It does have a 180 degrees focus throw, which is nice and pleasant to do rack focusing using a follow focus. And for the very cinematic sunflowers, I was using the Tilta mini follow focus, and it was really, really pleasant to use. From cinema lenses standpoint, I can only compare it to the Meike T2.2 lenses. I own, or I used to own a 25 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. I only have the 25 millimeter left because I didn't have any use for the 12 millimeter. And this lens is a bit heavier and feels a bit sturdier and better built than the Meike's, but they are not that far away. The Meike's are a little bit cheaper, um, quite a tad slower at T2.2 instead of T1.0, but the Meike's are sharp or acceptably sharp starting from T2.2, while this one is not acceptably sharp at T1.0, as we've seen a couple of times, and I may mention that a few times more still. Optically, I'll, it looks good. I did the cinematic shot of the cinematic sunflowers and I was really, really pleased with it. Um, I'm not super picky with the extreme corner sharpness or the color fringing kind of thing. So if things look okay and good enough to me, I'm pretty happy. With that said, at T1.0, this thing is, is soft. It's really, really soft, even if you were to nail the focus. It has maybe kind of a magical, glowy look that might be good if you're looking for specifically that particular look from an artistic perspective. But it might be a bit difficult to match the look of T1.0 to the look of anything above T1.4. So to me, this lens is actually a specialized, glowy, magical, soft T1.0 lens for a usage and then a really good 17 millimeter T1.4 onwards with acceptable sharp sharpness throughout as a second use case. Mixing both might be a bit complicated. The Sunflower cinematic video with the cinematic lens was cinematically speaking a little bit inconsistent because some of the shots were T1.0 
and most of the others were not. So most of the others, whether were T2 or T5.6, looked somewhat the same in terms of sharpness, and the T1.0 were having that magical glowy look. If that's something that you're after, that's something that you like, this lens gives it to you. And actually, I would say that if they would just have, like, I don't know, removed the option of putting it uh, anything uh, below T1.5, and they would have called this a T1.5 lens, you would have here a massive competitor to anything else that is about 16, 17 millimeter of cinema lenses for micro four thirds. That would be definitely more than sharp enough starting at T1.5 onwards, while some of the other options at wide open apertures might not be so sharp. So, but here, we have the magical glow of T1.0 if we want to play with it. So what alternatives do we have? Well, we have the Make 16mm T2.2 and I would say that the other one would be the SLR Magic Micro Prime T1.5. The Make is quite a bit slower at T2.2. It's also the cheapest of the three options. The SLR Magic is T1.5. So again, in the middle in terms of T-stop, but also in the terms of price. Which of the three would I get? I got this one because I really wanted to test the magical glowness of T1.0. But if you're not going to be using that much of white aperture and shallow depth of field, again, remember that we're talking micro for thirds wall here, then you might want to consider some of the others. But the thing is that the price difference between this and the others is not that crazy. So the make here in Europe goes for about 400 euros, and this can be found for around 500. So that's not a huge difference considering that we're talking T2.2 versus T1.0. But these are the three affordable cinema lenses for micro four thirds that will roughly give you a field of view equivalent of 32 to 34 millimeters. And let me throw here a little bit of a curveball. So if what you actually wanted was just a 17 millimeter lens for micro four thirds, that it's fully manual and it performs nicely, I would take a look at the Laowa 17 millimeter f1.8. It's not a cinema lens, it does not have gears for follow focus, etc. But on the other hand, it's fully manual, it's very affordable, and it performs really, really well. So if you wanted anyway something small to run around with, with this focal length, and it's a manual lens, I will look at those. And then if you wanted to focus, I don't know why we're talking about this in this video, but then get the Olympus 17mm f1.8 without the focus. But when it comes to its cinema lenses, that will give us the less focus breathing, ideally. Uh, this one does perform really well in that sense, and it gives us the good quality build and the gears. Then the Make the SLR Magic, or this Mitocon are the options to look for, and I have to say I'm very, very happy. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And we're gonna see you soon for some more content.